Hi, I'm Robin, and welcome to Rebalance Pilates at Home. This is a restorative Pilates class. So this is a great class to take if you are recovering from an injury, or you are very new to Pilates, or you just want to move, but you don't want that like crazy hard workout. This is going to be the class for you. We're going to get started on our backs. Now, to get down safely onto your back, if just kind of rolling down doesn't feel good, or if you're post-surgery and it doesn't feel good um, to do it that way, come to lie on your side and then roll onto your back. It's a safer way to get into this position. Also, if you feel that you need a head pillow at this point, please go and grab one. If you feel like your head is tipping too far back, and you need something to give you a little bit of extra support, now's the time to get that pillow. We're gonna start by finding our pelvic floor breath and abdominal engagement. So placing your hands into a triangle, I'm gonna place it onto the low abdominals, my fingers towards my pubic bone and my thumbs just under the belly button, elbows resting easily on the floor. Taking a breath in, and on the exhale, I want to think of pulling my pelvic floor in and up and like I'm zipping up a tight pair of jeans. So as I exhale, I'm going to feel a little tightness under the hands, taking a breath in, letting it go, exhale, feeling that pulling in sensation. So when I talk about pelvic floor, I like to use um, the image of a jellyfish. You can imagine the pelvic floor, which is at the base of the pelvis. As we inhale, that jellyfish is going to spread wide in the water. And as we exhale, the jellyfish pulls up, as does our pelvic floor. Inhale, the jellyfish spreads wide. And exhale, we pull in and up. One more time, inhaling and exhaling, feeling that engagement. That breath is important for the work that we're going to be doing today. So inhaling, I'm going to start to let my knees fall out to the side. Exhale, bring them back. Inhale. And exhale, pelvic floor pulls in and inner thighs become active. Now in restorative Pilates, or Pilates for when I'm working with someone who is recovering from an injury. We don't move very quickly. That's not really the point when we're working in this particular manner. We're slowly working the tissue. We want the tissue to trust the movement, and oftentimes if you're recovering from surgery or an injury, the tissue is a little traumatized and it doesn't quite trust movement. And so what we are doing is we're moving very slowly, massaging through the tissue, massaging the joints, so that that muscle and those tissues begin to trust you again. We're not forcing them into mm -hmm. positions that aren't comfortable. We're just slowly working them so that they begin to feel comfortable and they can then release if they have been in um, kind of a defensive tightened position and then they can start to work better because they trust you and they trust the movement and that takes some time so we're still doing our double knee drops here we're really not moving quickly this is a very gentle movement just focusing on that pelvic floor breath inhaling let the pelvic floor widen exhaling draw that pelvic floor together, pulling those in. Two more like this. One more time. We're going to try going into a single knee drop. So as my leg closest to the camera begins to widen, I want to support through my opposite leg. So I'm not going to let the inner thigh fall away on that leg. I'm going to think of that inner thigh activating and my oblique activating to keep the hip down, pulling the opposite leg back up. I'll show you that.
that again on the opposite side. As my knee falls away, I don't want my supporting leg to also start to open, but I also don't want this to start to happen where I roll my pelvis off the mat. So my oblique then has to kick in to keep the pelvis and the ribs down on the floor. Now that might mean that your range is quite small and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm still inhaling here and exhaling as I bring that leg in. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. And if you think of the work happening through the inner thigh rather than just, I have to open my leg, but you allow the inner thigh to slowly fall away from the pubic bone, you'll find that you'll actually get more range of movement than if you just try to let the leg fall out. Let the inner thigh stretch. Allow it to open away from the pubic bone while maintaining support on the opposite side and see if that makes a difference in terms of your range. Let's do one more time on each side just so you can check that with yourself. One more time, allowing that inner thigh to open wider. We're gonna let the legs rest where they are. We're gonna let the pelvis rest where it is. We still have support in the abdominals, but we're gonna bring the arms up to the ceiling. Going into our arm scissors, letting the right arm come to the right ear, the left arm is gonna come down to the hip, and then exhaling. Inhale as you open, and exhale. So again, a fairly gentle movement. The ribs are stretching here. They're not pushing up toward the ceiling, but I am allowing the ribs, especially on that arm that's reaching behind me, I am allowing the ribs on that side to stretch and open away from the ribs below it. So I'm not getting into this lifted position, but I do feel like I am lengthening through the whole lateral side of my body. And up, let's do one more time on each side. Last one here. Now we're going to let the arm closest to the camera only open. So feeling how that responds in the opposite rib cage and then coming back up. Let's do that on the other side. Opening that arm up, I'm going to hit my table so I'm going to come a little higher. And exhale. Opening the arm. So I'm resisting rotation here. As I open my arm up, I don't want to start to twist through my spine. I want my opposite shoulder and rib to stay nice and heavy on the mat. So that means my abdominals have to work a little harder, stabilize, but it's still a pretty gentle activation. And up. We're going to do one more time on each side. Last one. Now, here's a little coordination challenge for you. The arm closest to the camera is going to open, and the arm furthest away is going to reach back. So now I'm creating a big letter L with my hand. And then I'm going to bring it all back and switch to the other side. So as my arm away from the camera opens to the side, the one closest to the camera comes behind me. Here's my letter L. Pull that letter L back to center. And again, opening. And close. Open. 
elbows. One more time on each side. Making a big letter L, connecting that letter L, and opening and closing. Good, let's bring the arms down. So we're going to bring the leg up into tabletop position. So taking a breath in. On the exhale, I'm gonna bring my heel toward my bum and just let my thigh bone sink into my hip joint. I'm doing it this way so that way I can stay pretty easy in my hip flexor and I'm not starting from an overly stressed position. Just bringing my leg up so I have a 90 degree position with the leg. This is what we call tabletop. I'm gonna go into a toe tap. So taking a breath in, on my exhale, I'm gonna work from my hip joint, tapping my toe down into the floor and then lifting the leg back up. Now, I'm giving my bum a little bit of a squeeze, inhaling the leg back up, exhale, and up. And what I want you to notice on yourself is are you arching into your back as you do this? So if the back is starting to lift as you bring the leg down, then you may want to put a pillow or a yoga block or something underneath that you would tap to. So it would limit your, your range of tap. Uh, but it would give you a more supportive position to work from and to work in. So just checking in with your body. Let's do a couple more here. Inhaling up. Last one. Inhaling up. Bonus one to come down. We're going to do the other side, taking a breath in. On my exhale, dragging the heel toward the bum and just allowing the thigh bone to sink into the hip joint, bringing the leg up into that tabletop position. Breath in to prepare. On the exhale, tapping down, inhale up. Exhale, inhale up. Exhale, and up. So I really am working from my hip joint here. The hip joint is that crease where the thigh bone sinks into the pelvis. And I'm trying to maintain my 90 degree position with the leg here. So just checking in with yourself, are you reaching the leg out? Or are you kind of just dropping your foot? I'm, I really want to maintain my 90 degree as I do my work. Two more. One more time. Bonus to come down with control and release and relax. From here, we're going to go into some hip lifts. So I want to maintain a strong, flat um, spine here, okay? So taking a breath in, on the exhale, pulling the abdominals in, giving the bum a squeeze, and I'm gonna use the bum to lift the pelvis up. It's like a big platter of food being lifted up. And then I want my tailbone to be my anchor. So my tailbone is gonna to start to get nice and heavy. I'm gonna widen through the bum cheeks and hinge at that hip joint. So what I want you to be careful of here is that as you come down, you don't start to dip through the spine. We're not rolling through. That is a different exercise. But I also want you to make sure that as you come down in one piece, you're not leaving the ribs behind. See how my ribs are kind of being left in the air while my pelvis comes down? I really want my ribs and my hips to live in the same plane. So as I come down, my sternum and my pelvis are lowering together in one big piece. We're going to do that one more time. Finding the glutes and coming up. And then slowly letting the bum release. Let that tailbone feel like a heavy anchor leading the way all the way back down. We're going to add on just a little bit to it. We're going to come up. And we're just going to come halfway down. 
See if you can maintain the support through the core and the hips and press back up and down and press back up, down and up, down and up. Trying to keep the hips square. So this is a good opportunity to kind of see if one hip starts to lead and dip toward the floor as you do this. You really want to try to keep those hips level. One more time here. And then coming all the way back. Down. Very, very nicely done. Okay. Rolling onto our side. The next exercise that we're going to go into is going to really involve waking up those low abdominals. Now, uh, it's called the half rollback, and I do have a tutorial on it uh, in the website, so you can go and check that out for a more in-depth conversation about what is happening. Um, I do understand that sitting in this particular position might not be the most comfortable. Um, it gets really tight in the hip flexors. So what I would suggest is you can do this exercise sitting on a chair, or if you have a pillow nearby, you can get yourself onto the pillow, or um, if you have a footstool or something, it's just going to lift you up a little bit more, uh, which is going to put you in less hip flexion, and um, it'll just make it a little bit more comfortable for you. So I'm going to work with the pillow. Taking my breath in, I'm going to imagine my pelvis is a wheel. So letting my tailbone roll under, deepening the tummy muscles. Hands are just behind the knees, breath in. And on my exhale, I'm going to roll that tailbone back up. So I'm just rolling off my sits bones. My sits bones are these two little bony nubs on either side of my bum cheeks. As I let the tailbone roll under, that pelvic wheel is going to roll, and I roll off of the sit bones onto the fleshier part of my bum cheeks. And then I'm going to roll back. So I'm deepening through my tummy muscles here, letting the pubic bone reach away from the belly button, allowing the tailbone to bring itself back to its starting position. And we do that again. Exhale, pulling up through that pelvic floor as I find that roll. So I'm deepening right from the base of my foundation up. And rolling back up. Just a couple more like this, deepening through the tummy muscles. And back up. One more time, scooping and scooping and scooping. Rolling back up. We're going to stay seated. Um, your choice as to if you would like to cross your legs for this or not, I am going to cross my legs, and I'm just going to reach my arms out in front of me. We're going to do a little spinal rotation. So keeping my pelvis very quiet on my pillow here, I'm going to begin to turn my head toward you. Letting that elbow bend, I'm going to continue to follow that elbow with my eyes, reaching out through the opposite hand. So it's almost like I'm pulling a bow and arrow here, rotating through that rib cage, and then back to center. Now my pelvis is not moving or shifting on this. I really am thinking of my head, my collarbone, and my rib cage wrapping around the central axis of my spine. But my pelvis is staying nice and quiet. So if we have a disc herniation on, um, in the lumbar, which is where they typically tend to live, in the lumbar spine, this kind of rotation is actually still okay to do because we're not rotating down into that lumbar spine. We're staying through the neck and the thoracic spine, the rib cage. We're gonna do one more time on each side. And this time, what I want you to do is imagine that there are balloons between your vertebrae. Now we're just gonna let each of those balloons blow themselves up a little bit. So I'm just gonna feel lightness coming out through the top of my head. And as I begin to do my rotation, I want to imagine that I'm just gently rotating on those balloons. So I have this feeling of rotating upward rather than being screwed down into the floor. 
I want to feel like I'm spiraling upward. One more time, just because it feels so nice to do it this way. And down. Okay, so we are going to do some work now on our sides, taking the pillow away, or if you'd like to use the pillow to lie down on. Oh, that's quite nice. I think I'll do that. I'm just going to use the pillow to lie down on. Again, all of the positions I'm going into, I have foundation videos on this that you can watch where I talk a little bit more in depth about how to get into the position. But very quickly, lying on my side, pulling my abdominals in for support, and my hips are square. We're going to go into an exercise called the open book. So my legs are 90 degrees. I'm in a tabletop position, even though I'm on my side. Giving my bum a squeeze, I'm going to start to lift the leg up. And then come back down. Giving the bum a squeeze, using the glute and lifting the whole leg up. Now, what I want you to be careful of is as you engage the glute, you don't start to lift from your foot and the knee drops down. That is a different exercise. What I'm looking for here is that the knee is either living higher than the ankle or they are in line with each other. I don't want you to start to dip down. We're looking for a little external rotation with that leg. So finding that glute and lifting and down. And you may not lift the leg very high, that's okay. Just moving nice and easily here. Let's do three more. You should be feeling some of that work in the glute by now. And two. And one. Now, we're going to lower the leg down so it's in line with the hip joint, which means I have a bit of a smaller space between my legs. And I'm going to now bring my leg back, opening up the front of the hip. And then leading with my knee, letting my bum cheeks open really wide, we're coming back in. Giving the bum a squeeze. So I'm staying lifted throughout this and coming back in. It's like I'm doing my toe tap that I did before, except now I'm kind of tapping back behind me. And, in. and let's do a few more like this. So not moving quickly, pulling those abdominals in, take breaks when you need to. Two. I'm gonna do one more time like this. Checking in, is the knee starting to dip a little bit? And back, and then lower that leg down. Now, we are not quite done yet here. Just give the bum a little bit of a break. And now we are going to look at some internal rotation. So when we were doing this lift before, I said I didn't want the knee to come down. Now I do want the knee to come down. So what we're gonna do is keeping the knees glued together, I'm gonna lift my feet apart from each other. And this is naturally going to internally rotate my thigh bone a little bit. I'm gonna flex my foot, giving my bum a squeeze. I'm still lifting my thigh bone up keeping the leg bent so I'm still in a 90 degree position and then I'm going to release my bum and touch my knees together. Engage my glute and come back. So I am going back on a little bit of a diagonal and touch. Engage the glute and back and touch. So this just helps to fire into um, different fibers of my glute lead which is a very important muscle in terms of pelvic stabilization. Exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling. Two more here. And in. Last one. And in and coming down. All right. 
just letting the bottom arm rest, I'm going to reach my top arm out and just lifting it up toward the ceiling and then back down. So we did something similar on our backs as we opened up the arm and down. I'm resisting rotation here as well, so I don't want to start to twist through the spine. That is a different exercise. But one thing I am really looking at here is what's going on with my shoulder blade. So as I let my arm come down, I want my shoulder blade to release and to slide with me. So the shoulder blade is going to feel like it's coming forward on that rib cage. It's just sliding forward. Now, I'm going to leave with my fingers to come back up. And as I do so, I want you to think of your shoulder blade gliding back down towards your spine. We're not forcing it. We're just allowing it to naturally do that. And then coming back down, let the shoulder blade go. Let it move with you. Lead with the fingers to come up. Allow that shoulder blade to naturally slide back down to the shoulder or back down to the spine. And what I'll do is I'm going to turn myself around just so you can see what that looks like. So here's my shoulder blade. It's forward right now. I'm going to come up and see how it slides back toward my spine. And then I'm allowing it to move. I'm letting it reach away from the spine. Sliding back down toward the spine. And down. So let's do one more time like that on this side before we go to the opposite side. So the arms up. And as we come down, just nice and easy here. And then as I lead with my fingers up, let that shoulder blade just begin to glide and slide, not forcing it. I'm just lifting my arm and then down. Pushing yourself up, let's move ourselves over to the other side. Taking the pillow with you. All right, so hips are square, tummy is pulled in, and I want you to check yourself to make sure that you've got some, uh, that 90 degree position. If you feel, I uh, forgot to say this on the other side, but if you feel you need something underneath your waist to help you from sinking into the waist, into the floor, you can grab a small pillow or take a folded up dish towel and place it under there, just as a little reminder that you wanna stay lifted. So, tummy's nice and supported. I'm going to give my bum a squeeze. So I start by squeezing my bum a little bit. Then using that glute energy, I'm going to slowly lift my leg. Here's my open book. And then I'm going to slowly bring that leg back down. And again, you want to check in with yourself. Are you dropping that knee? Or is it staying nice and in line um, with the hip joint? and with the ankle and down, which is what we're looking for. And down. Now this side might feel a little tired already in comparison to the other side because it was working to stabilize us when we were lying down on it. So just because it wasn't doing movement doesn't mean that it wasn't working. Two more. One more time. And then we bring the leg down. It's in line with the hip joint. I'm not changing my 90 degrees. I'm going to give my bum a squeeze, bring the foot back behind me, feel like I'm opening up the front of the leg, then bring that knee in toward the chest. And again, just checking in with yourself. It's really easy on this one to let that knee drop to the floor. And we want to try to avoid that. So just nice and easy, back and forth. Hopefully you're starting to feel a little shakety, shakety, shake in those glutes. Tummy is pulled in. Exhale. And in. We've got one more time here. And in, lower the leg with control. 
Now, our internal rotation. We're gluing the knees together. Turn that ankle or that um, foot up toward the ceiling and flex. Giving the glute a squeeze, I'm gonna now bring my leg back on a little bit of a diagonal and then hinge and come down. Give the bum a squeeze, pressing back and down and back and down. Let's do this for five. Moving slowly through it. Feel the glute engagement. Feel the abdominal supporting. Then letting the bum slowly release as you bring that leg back down. Giving the glute a squeeze to lift. Slowly coming back down. Let's do this for three. Two. One more time. And then lowering the leg down. Let's do the arm. So the arm comes up. So just like the other side, as I bring the arm down, you want to allow the shoulder blade to go with you. I'm not rotating through my rib cage, but I am letting the shoulder blade go. Then reaching out through my fingers, I'm going to start to lift up, letting the shoulder blade glide itself just nice and easy to the spine. Then coming back down. And up. And down. And up. Just nice and easy. It's just kind of nice to let the shoulder blades move a little bit. We're going to do a little bit more shoulder blade movement in a moment. But what's nice right now is that, especially as you lift that arm up, and as you go down, but especially as you go up, gravity is our friend. So even though we're resisting gravity as we bring the arm up, it's allowing the shoulder blade to just glide itself down to the spine. We really don't have to do much to get that movement to happen because it's, Gravity is doing most of the work for us. And down, good, and in. Okay, so one of the last exercises that we are going to look at is called the scapula glides. It is very important to find movement through the shoulder blade because if we are stuck in that movement around our shoulder blade and collarbone, then we tend to overwork through the shoulders and the rib cage, which can lead to a lot of neck and shoulder pain. So I'm just gonna fix my hair and then I'm gonna turn my back to you. It's not that I don't like you, but I need you to show, I need to show you my shoulder blades. So I want to imagine that my shoulder blades are little elevator doors. I'm gonna reach my arms out. So I'm going to glide my elevator doors shut. You can see I'm pulling my shoulder blades together toward the spine. And now I want to open my shoulder blades. So I'm reaching out through my fingers. And as I do that, I'm gently pulling my shoulder blades apart. It's not a big movement. I'm going to slide those elevator doors together. And I'm going to draw those elevator doors away from each other. What I want you to notice is that the elevator doors, and you can join me on this now, they're sliding on the horizontal plane. I'm not going up to the first floor, and I'm not going down to the basement. I am just letting the doors close and letting the doors open. It is a much smaller movement than people think that it is, but it's really quite small and contained, but it's really important to find that movement because it can really affect the rest of the body if we are unable to find that. And then coming down. Another way to find movement through the shoulder blade is through the collarbone. 
So the collarbone has a connection to the shoulder blade and the collarbone connects onto the rib cage. It's the only bony connection of the shoulder blade through collarbone to the rib cage because the, the shoulder blades actually sit on top of the rib cage. They're not connected um, through bone onto it. So if we aren't moving properly through our collarbone, then we're not going to move properly through our shoulder blade. So another thing that you can do is just take a moment to tap along the shoulder blade or along the collarbone. What's nice is that the collarbone is one of those really bony bones. It's pretty easy to hold on to and we're going to hold on to it in a minute. It's just nice and easy. This is our last little restorative piece today. If you have ever done a class with me, you know how much I like to do the tapping. The tapping is great. It gives the brain, it wakes the brain up. It reminds us where um, certain bones and muscles and tissue are that we can kind of forget. So sensory wise, it just kind of wakes the body up a little bit. It wakes the brain up. What I want you to do is grab onto that collarbone and bring the arm out in front. So we're gonna do that same elevator door movement. I'm gonna gently reach my arm forward, allowing the elevator door to open. And I want you to feel what happens with the collarbone under your fingers. It kind of like domes under you a little bit or bowls under you. As I slide my shoulder blade back toward my spine, the collarbone flattens and widens across the chest. It almost feels like it pulls away from my fingers. As I pull forward with the fingers, allowing the shoulder blade to round, I get more grip of that collarbone. And as I slide the shoulder blade back, that collarbone begins to disappear a little bit from my hands. So that's another way to think of the movement of the shoulder blades. I can think of allowing the dome or the bowl of the collarbone. And then as I glide my shoulder blades towards each other, really think of widening that collarbone across the chest. Shoulder blades reach apart. I dome a little bit in that collarbone. And then I let that collarbone open wide as I slide the shoulder blades together. And because again, I'm working in this horizontal plane, it keeps me from getting up into my shoulders or into my neck. And it keeps me from pulling down too much into my lat. The last thing I want you to just watch on this as you do it is that um, especially as you begin to widen the collarbone across, I don't want you to push your ribs forward. So collarbone and rib cage only connect in one part of, or sorry, collarbone and shoulder blades only connect to one part of the rib cage, and it's right here. So I should be able to move the rest of that structure without upsetting the connections of the spine on my thoracic spine. I don't have to bring my ribs forward to make that happen. Last few here, just finding that easy movement. And then allowing the shoulder blades to relax and coming back down. So that is your first restorative class. Again, a lot of the restorative Pilates movement, it moves slowly. We may not do a huge amount of exercises. We want the tissue to trust us, so that's why we move slowly. And um, there's a lot more talking, there's a lot more explaining because especially if you are recovering from an injury, recovering from surgery, we wanna make sure that you're being really smart in your movement because it's a great opportunity for us to build those blocks back up in a strong and functional way that's gonna make you stronger and it's not gonna let the surgery or the injury hold you back from moving forward in your recovery. Thank you so much and I'll see you again soon.